Hey guys, I know it's been a while since I've made a video, um, but I just wanted to come on here today and just give you guys an update on how I've been feeling, what I've been doing, and what I've been working on. So I want to talk about something that is a little bit embarrassing for me because you know, I'm, I'm kind of one of those people who has a hard time admitting when I'm going through something. Like, I don't really like to admit or like complain about my problems or really just like let someone know when I'm hurting. But especially because I feel like people are always watching me for like inspiration or to be an example or something like that. I don't know, maybe it's just like my in my own head or whatever, but you know, I'm human and I definitely have times when things are not okay. And I want to share this, I wanna start like actually vlogging um, like the emotional ups and downs of this journey because you know it's not always like super inspirational and super um positive or whatever and really like making these videos on youtube is really more therapeutic for me than it is anything um like all of the videos that i've made in the past before this once i make the video i forget completely about whatever I was talking about like it just kind of like gets erased from my mind and it's um it's almost like releasing releasing it through this way is like a way to like help me get over it so that's the other reason why I'm making this video now because I want to like hopefully get over this so I've noticed in the past like three weeks that I've been getting weak again not anything like drastic to where it's like affecting um my mobility or independence or anything like that but i i've no i know it like i know my body so well and i've been dealing with this for so long now almost nine years that i can tell the second something is off or there the uh, inflammation in my muscle has increased any more than normal like I can, I can tell when something's wrong and it started like about three weeks ago out of nowhere. So I think that's something I ate. I know it's something I ate that has like kind of triggered, um, an immune response. I'm just trying to remember what it could have been. Like, I don't, I have no idea what I ate that did this, but, but like, I just, I kind of just feel like my muscles, like the bit that I have left have just like completely have just like kind of um you know fell a little bit and and I don't I don't know it kind of scared me at first like when I first realized that's what was going on but you know even beyond that like I just kind of have like some insecurities about my ability to get better my ability to heal it's like I've been dealing with this disease for 9 years now and you know I I was able to learn how to walk again and get myself out of my wheelchair after like three years, three, four years the first time. Um, but it still is like, it's hard. It's very, very hard to keep hope, especially the longer you are in a situation, the longer that you are um, in a wheelchair. It's it's very hard to see um a day where you're not gonna be and usually I ignore those type of thoughts and, and you know I just kind of take like this blind faith approach to it but I don't know it's just been like really really hard lately and I think in some ways um I was like kind of giving up hope a little bit because I am so weak and I mean I'm in a wheelchair so um, you know, like I have to learn, I have to be able to like learn how to walk again and my arms are weak. Um, my shoulders are weak. My back is weak. Like it's, it's just a lot. And it's see, you know, when you have like these massive mountains that you're trying to get over, it just can seem so impossible, especially like when problems just continue to, to pile up. It's like, like may have been starting at this point now I feel like I'm starting all the way back here again and 
it's daunting. It's definitely daunting and it's scary and it can definitely make you just want to give up and throw the towel in. And I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm still young, but I'm also not that young and I'm getting older. So it's, it's scary. Also, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, what I have is called polymyositis and it's an autoimmune inflammatory disease in the muscles. Um, I will put a link to that video explaining my story a little bit more, um, just in case you haven't seen it. But, um, you know, for the most part, I do pretty well with, like, staying positive about it. But, you know, just recently, it's just kind of been, like, really, really hard. Um, like I said, mainly feeling like I'm starting from a lower point and it's, it's a lot to, to get to my goals of where I want to be. It's, it's a lot that I have to overcome, but it kind of has brought me to what I wanted to talk about. And this can apply to really kind of any area in your life, even beyond health. Um, and that's about blind faith and sort of denial, the importance sometimes of denial. I definitely think that denial in some cases of extreme trauma or pain is like the body's way of protecting itself and a way of your body protecting its subconscious because everything begins in your subconscious and that's the way that you manifest things into this world. So if you if your subconscious is convinced that something you know is what it is that's what's going to continue to manifest into your life and when i first got sick as i say in my other video um and they told me you are extremely ill you're extremely weak you really shouldn't even be alive right now we don't even know how you're alive but if you do manage to survive or to stay alive you're probably going to live the rest of your life in a, in a nursing home by those odds alone if i never even walk again i've beaten all of those odds and the way i believe i truly believe the reason that i was able to learn how to walk again and the reason i'm still here sitting here to do this video today is because I never believed them. When they first told me that, I was completely like, completely in denial and, and just like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not that weak, I'm not that sick. They don't know what they're talking about. Like, I never allowed it to process or I never internalized anything they said. Um, I could see what was happening to my body. I saw, you know, where I was. I knew I was in a hospital. I knew what was going on. But it just never really, like, clicked to me. It was always, like, a matter of time, okay? So, obviously, I'm going to walk again. It's just a matter of how long. It's just a matter of when. Um, it was just never a question. And they thought I was crazy as hell. When I tell you they thought I was crazy at that hospital, they would literally send psychiatrists into my room to try to, like, talk to me, try to convince me. Like, I think I had one psychiatrist who was just, like, I don't understand why you're not depressed. I don't understand why you're not devastated and like suicidal. Like, do you really understand what just happened to you? Like, you know, react, respond to it. And I would still just be like, oh, I'm okay. Like, what are you guys talking about? I'm fine, you know? And it was, it seems crazy to the outside person. It really seems crazy, but it got me through. And I was able to completely regain regain all the strength in my legs and walk again and I'm still alive this without any medication either something that has never happened on this disease um, and with somebody who had it as severe as I do so there's something to be said for blind faith um, you are what you believe you are and you can achieve what you think that you can achieve so I'm just, I'm in that place where I'm just trying to block out any of those kind of thoughts and just remain as positive as possible. Because I think even more crucial than what you eat or any medicine you take, your attitude is what really will heal you. I think that that's more important than anything. So just trying to remind myself that and just stay in that place. Um, 
and I kind of wanted to share a dream that I had as well that kind of like really brought that home for me. A couple of months ago, I had a dream that my grandmother came to me and my grandmother has passed away about five or six years now. And she came to me and she had took me outside to this garden that was in my backyard. And the, it was a little tiny garden. It wasn't even that big. Um, it was a little, little tiny thing, but it, it all the plants were dead. And it was like a rose garden or whatever. So there were like the long stems of the road where the roses used to be, but they were all dead and it was dried up. The stems were brown and brittle and there were no leaves anywhere. And the earth part, like the grass, um, was completely covered in concrete. Like concrete had just grew all over the soil. And I'm just like this raggedy ass, um, you know, raggedy ass garden. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? And she came and she was telling me like, water it, you know, tend to it. And I was like, why? Like, why would I do this? It's dead beyond repair. You know, water ain't gonna do nothing to this garden. It's gone. And she said, water it anyway. That's what she just kept saying to me, water it anyway. And I was just like, okay, you know, whatever. And so I started pouring water on the concrete and I'm just pouring it and I'm just thinking she's crazy and I'm like, this isn't gonna do anything, but I'm still pouring water on it. And over time, that concrete began to lift. And I think I woke up at this point, but I was just like, oh my God, like I get it. You know what I mean? I get the message that she was trying to give me. So I just say that to you guys to remember that whether you're battling health issues, personal, other personal issues, um, no matter how dark and bleak the situation looks, no matter how daunting or how much work it's going to take to get better, don't give up. Keep watering that concrete. It will lift eventually. So, um, you know, along with that, I'm losing sunlight here. <laughs> um, anyway, so I also wanted to talk about diet and what kind of like what the next steps are going to be for me um, in trying to reverse, the, reverse this. I have like little um, tricks that I do when I feel inflammation coming on for like a quick way to stop it. One of those ways is to take calcium lactate powder and um, calcium is like the quickest way to neutralize inflammation in the body. So I always have that powder with me. Um, another way is... Um, cranberry juice and cherry juice so I've been drinking that like crazy and honestly after three days of drinking it I've been feeling good so I'm definitely feeling a lot better now than I have been um I got my energy back and everything so um, I wanted to talk about <clears throat> I want to talk about like cravings and stuff because one thing that I have noticed is that cravings are important cravings matter unless you know obviously I'm not talking about like junk food or like you know, pizza and stuff like that, but normal, just cravings of normal food usually have to do with something your body wants, because I find myself always craving eggs. I can eat like a whole carton of eggs a day. I need that protein. And I'm always craving pineapple juice. Like I can drink pineapple juice all day, every day. And I always thought, maybe something's wrong with me. Why am I craving pineapple juice like this? But that bromelain in it is excellent for inflammation. And it's like your body will ask, will tell you what it needs. It really will. And I mean, you all know that I do follow Dr. Sabi. Um, I follow Dr. Sabi's protocol. Um, I have um, a couple of therapeutic packages of his that I take, honestly, when I remember. But... Um, one thing that I I always wanted to talk about was the diet portion of it because even when I was vegan and raw and raw vegan, I never I never resonated with his diet plan because it's too restrictive to me. And honestly, I don't I'm not entirely convinced that just because a vegetable or fruit is hybrid that it has no nutritional value. 
pineapples, for example. I feel amazing when I eat pineapples and drink pineapple juice on a, on a regular. What's that on the list? Pomegranates. I feel amazing when I eat pomegranates every day. Not on the list. Um, and you can't tell me that. I don't, I don't know. Leave me a comment if you can explain it to me or, you know, or something. But I just, I really don't see how, at the very least, it won't hurt. You know what I mean? So I definitely don't want to restrict myself to um, just the food on his list. And I've done a lot of restrictive diets in the past, and it's never led to anything good. So I just kind of try to stay away from that. Um, I have the utmost respect for Dr. Sabi and his work and his teachings, and I love his herbs. Um, but that was just, that's just one area that I've never been able to follow him on, is the diet plan. So... <clears throat> with that being said, my diet has actually been 90% vegan most of this time, but I'm thinking of trying something new. I think I'm going to try a high protein diet. Um, I think that that's what my body wants and what it's asking for. Um, I'm going to do it with meat and I'm also go but I'm going to probably use a pretty big mixture of meat and vegan protein sources because um, I did the little like body count thing, protein for your body count chart. And it said that I needed like 100 grams of protein a day, which is a lot. I don't know how I'm going to do all of that, but it's going to have to be like a majority vegetables, um, beans and, and, you know, meat. But it's going to be really hard for me because I am not a meat eater like that. Like, even when I do eat meat, it's, like, very rare. And it's really only, like, turkey and the occasional chicken. But I'm going to get back into beef and I'm going to eat more eggs. And um, I do drink kefir on the regular. Kefir is amazing. But it's going to be hard. I don't know how I'm going to get that much protein in. But I'm going to try it because I want to lose weight. And because I'm not extremely active, I think that that's the best way for me to lose weight you know, without being able to exercise that much. And I think that replenishing the protein in my body is going to help a lot. So I don't know. Keep you, I'm going to keep you guys, um, I'm going to keep you guys in the loop with that and how that goes. Um, I still do not know how I'm going to get a hundred grams of protein in a day. Like that is so much, but you know, that's just what I'm, that's what I'm at right now. That's what I feel like my body is asking for. Um, as well as lots of pineapple juice, lots of cranberry juice, um, molasses, and just like, I don't know. I'm all about experimenting. If it doesn't work, and if I don't like it after a couple of weeks, then, you know, I'm off it, whatever. So, um, anyway, that's it. If you guys um, have any suggestions for me or, you know, any tips or whatever, just like leave it in the comments below. And subscribe for more. Thank you.